just by saying that there's the large number hypothesis is that there's so much possibility that that leads to probability. That's a logical fallacy. Just because there's a large number, there's a, there's a potential. Right. If Earth didn't exist, but right. Earth does exist and humans do exist and, and Earth is rich with life forms. We that, know that it's possible. That's true. And we know that it's possible given the parameters that Earth enjoys. That's, right? what, that's why I say. If and we know that there's an insane amount of planets out there right. that could replicate this environment. Right. So wouldn't you then say, again, if you knew that life is, is so incredible, there's these extremophiles that live in volcanic vents 3,000 mm -hmm. meters under the ocean. Um, so again... You have to say, like, what are the odds that we would not see life on Mars or on Enceladus? And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying there's right, no But it's life. just Mars. It's one example. And it could be that life requires a very narrow window that we enjoy. Sure. That right? may be. But, but look at all the other factors that go into the life existence on Earth. We talked about Jupiter before. Mm -hmm. There are scientists that believe that without Jupiter, we wouldn't be here because Jupiter is like a big vacuum cleaner. Right. There are scientists that believe that if the moon wasn't as close as it is, you know, that the moon is mm -hmm. exactly the same angular diameter as the sun from the earth do you know what that implies for you and, and next april 8th when i come and visit you again <laughs> there's a total eclipse of the sun oh wow so i'm going to take you if you're willing i'm going yeah, sure. to show you the eclipse that sounds of the sun. like a lot of fun uh it'll change where your would life. we go uh, we're going to go up to san antonio Oh, nice. We're going to drive. It's easy. Okay. Or a fly. We'll get to you know, we'll It's only a 90-minute drive. Yeah, it's not even no. 90 minutes, right? Have you Was ever experienced a total solar eclipse? Minutes? Um, I, I didn't experience it because I, I, I remember, was it Donald Trump that was staring at the sun? <laughs> Wasn't it? It was him. Yeah, it was. It was him. And <laughs> okay. I was like, I'm not going to be that guy. I think I did try to look at it. Yeah, now that I remember, but it didn't yes. come through here. So anyway, no, it was in California. If you were to see it, you would the the experience that you had on Mauna Kea will seem like you know like you're just going down to the to the bar or something. Really, this has changed your life. Okay, I'm in. This will change your Damn life. Damn it, we told everybody we we're going to San Antonio on April eighth. It's going to be a real problem. <laughs> Well, we'll find a secret place. A lot Maybe. of freaks. Yeah, exactly. Freaks are going to show up. Um, so, um, so okay. but the reason I bring that up is because it happens to have the exact... Have you ever seen the, the, the far side? There's no dark side of the moon. There's a far side of the moon. Mm -hmm. right? It's riddled with craters. Guess what? Each one of those is a target, is, is, is a secret service agent that took the bullet for us. Okay? Right. Any one of those could have exterminated. Yes. Uh, the, the, the fact that we did have a huge impact 65 million years ago that led to the, the advent of the mammals to, repli to replace the dinosaurs. The fact that we have internal terrestrial magnetism that uh, then allows cosmic radiation to avoid impacting the Earth where the pro population is the largest of all species. Um, the auroras are in the north. They're not in the, in the, uh, in the equator. We don't see them here. Um, the, uh, the existence of plate tectonics, which is lubricated. The going theory about plate tectonics, I don't know if you've heard this, but that there, uh, it's actually there, uh, a lubricant. You ever heard of like dry graphite as a lubricant that like you put in guns or whatever? Mm -hmm. But uh, that the continental shelf is moving over these things. They think that that's a precursor, a requisite for life. Okay, mm. Ma let's do the following very simple calculation. Imagine there's eight things. You're God. You say, uh, to have an iPhone, you're going to need eight things. I think there's like trillions and trillions of things. But imagine there's eight of them, okay? Mm -hmm. And imagine each one, that the Earth has a moon that's just the right distance to have tides to slosh biological material back and forth from the earlier, uh, and that has plate tectonics, that's two, has a Jupiter nearby. It eventually hits, uh, gets hit by a Chicxulub meteor uh, that uh, kills off the big dinosaurs. It, it has um, a diurnal period that's compatible. It has a magnetic. Okay, let's just say there's eight of them. Right. Let's say each one has a probability in your godlike cosmic roulette wheel of one in a thousand for each one of those eight things to occur. One over 1,000. Now, if you take that problem, and I think it's zero, it's like one over 10 trillion for some of these things, right? Now, take each one of those. So take one over 1,000, raise it to the eighth power. You get one, 10 to the 24th. Guess what that number is? What? It's the same as the number of stars in the whole universe throughout history. So in other words, one thing, only eight different things that had to occur to make life in my simplified God computer <laughs> that Joe mm -hmm. Rogan is controlling. And we, the probability of those eight things only is only one part in 10 to the 24th. Then the problem is you're, you're multiplying a large number by a number that's completely unknown. The probability that all these events could line up to make life. And you're saying uh, anything times infinity is, is finite. Right. I don't but agree can I with stop that. You? Is yeah. that but, but we're not necessarily saying that. For, for, first of all, is it conceivable that there would be solar systems that don't have the sort of asteroid and meteor activity that we do? 
Uh, of course, yeah. So might. wouldn't they maybe not get as pelted by asteroids and meteors and have more time to develop? Isn't that conceivable that there could be a different kind of life? If we find so much variety of life, like we talked about the volcanic vents, and mm -hmm. isn't it possible that there could be other ways that life could form in v different environments that may be hostile to biological life on Earth, but not to whatever evolves there? Of, when uh, we're uh, talking uh, about an infinite number of variables, when we're talking about so many different planets, but but why is it that the large number? See again, that's that's the Carl Sagan. You know, um, uh, if there's no life in the universe, it's a big awful waste of space. But that implies. I don't a think that's true. I think that's, that's what that's, he said. I, yeah. I, I well, I believe that he said that. Yeah. I don't, I'm not saying yeah, he yeah. didn't say that, but I don't think that way at all. I think we're so silly to think that this finite thing that we call biological life is the most significant thing and something that we know is at least 13 whatever billion years old that's so insane that human life which is just like this never-ending cycle of birth and death with this one particular organism that that thing is the most important thing that's going on in the fucking universe that's so crazy as much as i love people i know but you don't have any a, evidence for that right i mean there's the, what do you mean evidence for what you know i mean you can't say that we are not alone right, right? you can't I mean, say we're not alone and but i mean it's just the idea that that's the most important thing. That why biological why, life is the most important the thing. Most? I mean, uh, I'm coming from a religious perspective, right? So I'm going to say that we believe uh -huh. that, that humans have infinite worth and that we're made in the image of God, right? That we have right. godlike abilities. So, how many other godlike things could there be in the universe? Maybe, the, and again, I don't want this said that Brian Keating, astrophysicist, believes that there's definitely no life. I believe that there there could be life. In fact, I believe that there is life outside of the Earth, but I think it came from the Earth. Interesting. <laughs> Through like pants burning. Exactly. Yeah, interesting. You mean in the whole universe itself that it's come from the Earth? That well, Earth is the even the most – and I think you had Adam Frank, professor at University of Rochester, on about five or ten years ago. He, taught, he does the following calculation. He basically proves that it's likely that we're not the only technological civilization in, in the universe. Mm -hmm over the universe's history. And I love Adam. I'm like, who gives a, you know what? You know what he's saying, who Joe? Who gives a, everybody. No, 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 listen, they? Joe, no. listen okay. to what he says. I'm listening. He said that there's no, that there was at least one civilization, you know, with a probability greater than zero, in, out of the one, uh, 10 to the 24th power, you know, a trillion trillion planets and stars in the universe, that there's been one civilization throughout 13.8 billion years. That doesn't mean in our solar system. It doesn't mean in our galaxy. It doesn't mean in Andromeda, the small Magellanic clouds. It doesn't even mean right now. 